Uh, welcome back. I'm Jim. Deb is here. Hello. And Jack is here. Yo. So is Ross. Hello, Jim. Let's do It's Only Money. Helping people passionate about planning for their future rise above investment myths to build real wealth. Isn't that really just common sense financial advice? It's both. Oh, okay. It's Only Money with Scott Brown from Edgewater Family Wealth. Good and loud for our buddy Scott Brown. Oh, yeah. Got a little beanie head going today, though, doesn't he? (laughs) You know, it's, 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 uh, is that a hairdo uh, comment or just uh, an overall? You know, you know, when you're skiing, you're always taking that ski cap on and off. Yeah. You know, and the hair just looks. It doesn't look that good to begin with, and it just gets worse and worse. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it looks like you literally just walked in, because that's the thing. I, when I had hair, that's what I would get. You pull that thing off, and it creates static electricity. So not only is your hair mussy, it's standing straight up. Uh, but Yeah, I, it's, uh, it's, it's a common look here at Steamboat. Everybody just pretends you look fine. <laughs> it's fine. No problem. Uh, how you doing, buddy? How's your vacation going? Everything good? Every, everything's good, man. You know, it's funny. We keep calling it a vacation. I, I feel like I need to clarify. It's uh the wife and I agreed once the youngest left the house, which she sort of did, um, we were going to try a month in varying parts of the country. Just And this was our first experiment. So I've been working usually about half a day, and then we'll either go ski or we'll go snow. We're going to go snowshoeing on Saturday. Uh, but yeah, the grand experiment's coming to an end next week. We've got some friends coming in this afternoon. And uh, I highly recommend if you can find a part of the country you like and do it reasonably in terms of cost. By all means, I'm 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 giving you a thumbs up. It's a good thing right to on. do. And the cool thing is, is really that's what Edgewater Family Wealth is all about: is creating a scenario financially where you can do these things. You can let, kind of live that dream uh, when you get in your later years and you have a little bit more time on your hands. Your kids are out. You're empty nesting. Uh, you've made the right plans, and you know with with help uh, from a firm like yours, it allows you to have a few extra bucks to be able to have these little uh, jaunts across the country. Is it not? Yeah, Jim, you know, it's funny. It's that is what we do. And I try to lead by example here. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, some some people advisors have actually said to me, and I wrote about this in my book, they've said, don't your clients push back on your travel or when because I I'm known for sending videos from if I go travel somewhere that I think is interesting, I'll send a video back and we'll send it to the clients. And to be fair, they do it to me, too. And I say, no, my clients are not wired that way. They're not scarcity minded. They don't think they're not silly enough to think that if Scott goes somewhere exciting or exotic or whatever, that somehow that's going to mean we get less return. <laughs> they don't, they don't, that, that's a silly thing to think. If your advisor's on vacation and, and she or she sends you a photo from Tahiti, you're, you shouldn't immediately think, well, there goes my account. That's not how it works. Uh, you, you, know? you should lean into that, though, and send out a letter about every month going, hey, guys, skimming a half a percent. See you in Bali. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that, that might not go over very well. But yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, Scott, uh, obviously, your uh, Edgewater Family Wealth has been there for 30 plus years in Central Florida. You've been uh, giving sage advice to people uh, on how to treat their money and how to take care of their money and how to make it work for them. So later down the road, they don't have those nasty surprises financially and you can plan out a future. Yeah. Yeah. that really kind of ensures that peace of mind. So as you work toward your retirement date, you don't feel like there's that stress there, which is awesome. And what you sent us today is, and I think a really apt kind of piece of information, emotional needs versus material needs. Mm-hmm. And and I would like you to, you know, it seems like on the surface, that seems relatively easy to explain, but explain exactly mm-hmm. what you mean when you mean emotional needs versus material needs and when it comes to your finances and your portfolio. Well, and, and when I sent that to you, I was kind of thinking of it in the context. I've been doing some reading and, and I was reading, I'm reading a book about, um, basically it's about your behavioral economics and it talks about how human beings process you know, most of the decisions we make are emotional. And now I'm no different. I'm the same way. It's no matter what it is, you're, if you are saving for retirement, it's not because you like the idea of having these digits on your bank account. It's because those digits represent something to you emotionally. They represent uh, a child's wedding or a graduation right. party or a trip to Steamboat Springs, Colorado. Those are the things that those digits represent to you. And I I, 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 every morning I send ran, what I call random thoughts to my advisors. Uh, sometimes they listen, sometimes they ignore. Uh, but 
I sent something to them to say, look, you know, sometimes when we're talking to clients, we have to identify, are we, if they have an issue, is that an issue emotional or is it material? Because if you're meeting a client's material need, and what I mean by that is the returns are decent enough to say the process, the implementation of the process is working so that it's very clear to them when they see their accounts every at the end of every year, I am on pace to do what I need to do, right? That's that's meeting the material need. I said, Scott, when I retired, I want to spend 70 grand a year out of my account. So far, I've been able to do that, and there's no evidence on my statement to suggest I can't do that. That means your material need is met. But sometimes clients get sideways over other things, the news, politicians, legislation, uh, world events, and their emotions do not connect to the material outcome. So that means that they have an emotional need that is not being met by the advisor. And what that typically means is there's a communication issue. Because if we know the material need is being met, we know you have enough money in your account at the returns we've, we're, we're, we've been getting and expect to continue to get or at least close to, then your material need is met. You retired, you have your income, you're having your fun, and your money's going to survive. Material need net. Uh, need met. But if your emotional need, which is I'm scared, I'm uncomfortable, I don't like this person running for president, I don't like my local politician, I don't like the way the tax legislature, right. that's an emotional issue. And the advisor needs to understand meeting the material needs great, and it's the critical part. But if you're not communicating, that means the emotional need is not being met. And you may lose that client that may client even though they're getting what they need materially is not getting what they need emotionally. Well, how often, man? That is that is bananas. Like, how often does that happen? Do you lose a client where they, or where you, your you know, your entire job theoretically is numbers? You know, you are there to create mm-hmm. a positive <laughs> a positive earning environment for someone's uh, protected money. And emotionally, if they feel that they're not being coddled, is that the case? It's like, if they call you and you don't talk them off the ledge because you just saw the latest investing trend on TikTok and you want to take a stab at it, I mean, or or maybe you're freaked out because uh, you know where you live in Florida and the, you know the climate change is causing maybe the ocean to come up more, and you think you need to make a move. Is it that kind of thing? And it's almost like you're a therapist at that point. Oh, for sure. So I think, I, well, again, I think it's about communication. In my, our practice, we don't typically have that problem because I'm a communicator. I'm over, I, some people would say I over communicate. I don't, I don't like to leave voids in clients' communi- communication because when there's a void in communication, I don't care if it's a, a client advisor relationship or a marriage, if there's a void of communication, people will fill that with bad, right? They'll fill that with negative. So one of the credos of my firm is to communicate, 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 over-communicate till they tell us to stop communicating because that avoids the emotional problem. Now, you could also, Jim, you could have the opposite. You could have a client whose emotional needs are being met. Oh, yeah, I love that guy. He's awesome. Yeah, we go to dinner. We talk about sports. We talk about this. We love the same political party. That's all awesome. But their material need isn't getting met. And if their material need isn't getting met, they mean their returns aren't very good, they aren't competitive, or they simply just have never gone through a planning process that leads, leads them to believe they'll be successful, that's a, whole, that's a process problem. You have, a, you have the emotional need being met, but the material need isn't being met. Now, if neither of those needs are being met, what you have is a relationship problem. Yeah. <laughs> You're in a bad relationship. Yeah. And a, a lot of people struggle with that because they may like the advisor toward a um, or they just don't want to go through the hassle of the change. But if your emotional needs and your material needs are not being met, you're in a bad relationship and you need to do something different. Let, let me ask you, brother. And by the way, what chapter in your book, uh, which one of the books and which chapter is this? Do you happen to remember that? Oh, one? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> but, it, which, it, what, but I know it's in there. Uh, and it's the book, the one that you gave me, right? Yeah, so I wrote a book called I've Never Made Anyone right. Rich, and you know, people always make fun of that or think that's kind of funny, and, and part of the reason I called it that was to be silly, but the truth of the matter is I haven't, and so I called it that so people would stop focusing on my financial advisor needs to make me rich. No, your financial advisor isn't going to make you rich. They can help you build a process to either become or stay rich, 
but they are not going to make you rich. You're not going to give them a thousand dollars. They're going to make a trade on Tuesday and then Wednesday and call you. You tell you your retirement is good to go. That is not going to happen. Yeah, go ahead and tell your boss to screw off. I'll uh, I have a check. Yep, I, I, so, yes. so, so Scott, between uh, by the way, talking to Scott Brown here from Edgewater Family Wealth for It's Only Money. Uh, which one of those is more difficult to deal with from your perspective, the emotional need client or the material need client? Emotional all yeah, day long, without question, right? Cl- cl- clients' emotions are tough because you know. First of all, I- I've been doing this a long time—37 years. This is the beginning of my 37th year, and you become friends with them. You become a confidant. You would be shocked at some of the things people tell me that have nothing to do with investing. Sometimes, mm. um, and, and and you don't you don't you, know, you want to coddle them, and I, I don't know that coddle is the right word, but you want to comfort them. The, our job is to make you comfortable. It's no, no, any leader, any, I don't care what you're leading, whether it's the army or your business or your family, your job as the leader is to make people comfortable. Right. And, and I want my clients to be comfortable. Sometimes though, their emotions get so sideways, uh, that I have to kind of, you know, I have to be rough with them. I have to be harsh. And one of the things I, when I take on a client, I usually say to them is I'm going to disagree with you and I'm going to tell you when you're being silly, is that okay? Yeah. Yeah, because, I mean, I, you know, my wife just texted me and said it's not therapy because this is their well-being. This is their livelihood. And if they call you yeah. and they're emotional about something they see in the market or a buddy of theirs says, you know, hey, you know, my guy's getting me 18 percent. What's your guy doing? And you're like, oh, my mm-hmm. guy, my guy got me 15 percent last year. And then, of course, they call you and go, hey, man, my buddy Paul's over at, you know, ABC uh, yep. yeah, investing and, you know, they're earning more money and, you know, what's going on type thing. I mean, do you get that a lot? You get compared to other people or they hear stuff and immediately kind of fire off and, and believe maybe you're not doing the best job and you have to talk them off the ledge and say, Hey, look, you know, this is a long-term thing. We're not, we're not going year to year here. Yeah, that's a tough one. I don't get that a lot. I can't say it's never happened, you know, because if a client's talking to a friend and the friend says, I, I earned 22% or 18%, like you said, I usually will say to the client, okay, well, give me context. Did they do it once? Because if they're doing it on an annual basis for a repeated long period of time, I'm going to give them my money, right? So, <laughs> you know, so I don't I, – the, the idea that somebody's get whenever somebody says my friend is getting a disproportionate number that I know isn't likely or if it, it did happen, it was a fluke, I have to kind of explain to why that might be the case and say, well, why don't you go back and ask them this? And, you know, get some verification because I, you know, I opened my book with a story about the guy that's always bragging about his stock at the bar. Right. Right. There's always a guy, especially if I'm in the room and they find out what I do, Mm -hmm. they're going to come right up to me and tell me about that awesome trade they did and how, how good they are at picking stocks. And again, the reality is they're only going to tell you about the winners. They're not going to tell you the 40 other times they lost <laughs> their behinds or how they had a boatload of Enron or WorldCom or something like that. Right, right. Or they bought weed stocks or something with your money. <laughs> Wrong. It is. Wrong. Sometimes it happens, the, it happens to the best of us. <laughs> one of them, it could happen to anybody. One of them found some oxygen, though, by the way. Did it really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're bleeding, but it's, you're not squirting anymore. Oh, okay, good. So I'm staying just enough live to suffer? Yeah, yeah. Awesome, I could phrase you. that better next time yeah, but yeah you're still bleeding it. profuse <laughs> all right scott so- i mean i'm here i'm here in colorado so i mean it would be helpful if you could at least get some of the product <laughs> yeah, if you, while you're bleeding <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> there you, you go would you stuff that beanie full and put it in a hiding spot for your boy um, <laughs> <laughs> so ouch <laughs> so scott scott is with uh edgewater family wealth if if scott if uh, somebody's out there listening and they think maybe you know their portfolio manager or they don't have one but they would love to maybe start a relationship with somebody who can get their money in a position where it can earn for them long term and maybe set them up for a life that isn't so stressful down the road what's the best first move with you well you can reach us at edgewaterfamilywealth.com like we always say um and you can come to an event in fact we have an event coming up in february that i'll let i think it's on the 21st but i'll give you more detail next week but the, the best first step is just to make a phone call we have a great team um if you don't get me you'll get one of them my actually my son is one of my top advisors so if you don't get me, you'll get one of them. They can have a preliminary conversation to say, tell me where it hurts. What are you trying to do? What what's, what do you need to change? What are your goals? 
just a brief casual conversation. We're not onboarding anybody or taking anybody's money, shaking them upside down for the change in their pockets. The second we talk to them, we just want to make sure that it's a good fit, not only for them, but for us as well. Yeah, you know, most people really would go in there and not even really understand what you do all together. So even if you just want to make a phone call to find out what exactly they can do or what plan they have with the money that you have to offer and maybe contributions you can make, uh, you know, as you kind of move forward to kind of move toward that uh, financial freedom, uh, these guys can do that for you for sure. Yeah, I, I would also tell you that most of the phone calls we get, especially from the show, um, th- these people are not ready to be clients yet. They're just trying to get a handle on how they get started so that they can eventually become somebody who would benefit from having us, right? So um, a lot of the phone calls we get, it's just us saying, hey, try this, look at that, check this website out and do a couple of these things. We're Most of the people we talk to, we're, we're helping, but we're not onboarding them as clients. Very and, nice. And we're happy to do it, by the way. Yeah, and that, you know, but that's the first step. So, you know, even making that phone call means that you're proactive and making a change in your life to kind of move toward a little bit more financial freedom. So I think even a phone call, because a lot of people won't even do that. They get freaked out. They don't trust people. It's their money. Uh, they get real sketchy when it comes to talking to people about their income or and people what are they intimidated. Have. And they're, they're intimidated and, exactly. and maybe a little embarrassed by what they don't know talking to an expert in the field. For and sure. it, it should be the reverse. You should be welcoming that expertise. And buddy, if there's anything I think you do, it's make people feel really at home. You don't give them any there's no jargon involved. You're a regular guy, very easy to get along with. Uh, you're not trying to impress anybody, Great not trying hair. to do any of that. Pretty good hair. Look at the hair. Look at the hair. Come on. Got a beanie full of weed. He's the greatest guy out there. (laughs) Well, Scott, as always, thanks. Have yourself a wonderful vacation. We'll see you back. Now, are you back with us live next week? No, one more week. Okay, one more week on the road. Oh man, my God, my (laughs) living up travel plans. All right, you guys, give it up for Scott Brown. That's EdgewaterFamilyWealth.com, and the book's title is. I've never made anyone rich. (laughs) Go get it from Scott Brown. Scott, have a great time, buddy. We'll see you next week.